Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very exponential equation. We, we have a tower with twos and fours and x's. 2 to the power, 4 to the power, 2 to the power x equals 4 to the power, 2 to the power, 4 to the power x. Actually, this problem was suggested by one of my viewers, but I can't remember the name, but I'll try to find out. If you're the one, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll try to find out who suggested it and give you credit. So, first of all, before you start solving this problem, I want you to make a guess. Are there any real solutions for this equation? And then let's check it out. So we have something like this. What, we, what should we do first? We have a 2 on the left-hand side as our base, the very base, and 4 on the right-hand side, right? So let's go ahead and write this 4 as 2 to the second power. And then once we get the same base, we can kind of work with the exponents, okay? Because if you have something like a to the power m equals a to the power n, then we can safely say that m equals n as long as a does not equal 1, negative 1, or 0, okay? Great. Now let's see how we can do that. I'm going to write this as 2 to the power, 4 to the power, 2 to the power x. And on the right-hand side, instead of the 4, I'm just going to write 2 squared and put that in parentheses, and then raise it to the power, 2 to the power, 4 to the power x. Okay, so we got to keep track of this. we got to be careful because we have a lot of exponents. Okay, now, what should we do next? We have a 2 here to the power, 4 to the power, 2 to the x, and on the right-hand side, this exponent is actually multiplied by the other exponent. So it becomes 2 to the power, 2 times 2 to the power, 4 to the power x. And then since this 2 is just 2, we can write it as 2 to the first power. Now notice that the bases are the same, so we can go ahead and just focus on the exponents. Forget about the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. All right? When we do, we're going to get 4 to the power 2 to the power x equals 2 to the power. Now, when you multiply two powers or exponential at the same base, you add the exponents. So it's going to be 1 plus 4 to the power x. Make sense? We just added the exponents in the exponents. <laughs> okay. Anyways, 2 exponential. Now, next thing we're going to do is, since we have a 4 here, we are going to change it to 2 squared because we need equal bases so we can compare the exponents. So write the 4 as 2 to the second power, and then raise it to the power 2 to the power x, and then just set it equal to what's on the right-hand side. And now next, we're going to multiply the exponents, this one and this one, right? That's what the rule says. Whenever you have a to the power m to the power n, which is obviously valid for real numbers, not always for complex numbers, becomes a to the power m times n, okay? So when we multiply, we're going to get 2 to the power 2 times 2 to the power x equals 2 to the power 1 plus 4 to the power x. Awesome. What do we get from here? Let's see. The bases are equal, so we can go ahead and compare the exponents one more time. And this kind of gives us, since this is 2 to the first power, we get 2 to the power 1 plus x equals... 1 plus 4 to the power x. Hmm. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Here's what's going to happen. We're going to replace this 4 again. The 4 keeps popping up, right? So we're going to go ahead and replace this with 2 squared. 2 to the power 1 plus x equals 1 plus 2 to the power 2 to the power x. But notice that this can be written as 2 to the power 2x because, again, the exponents will be multiplied. Awesome. What do we do next? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as 2 times 2 to the power x. Normally, we would not separate them, but in this case, I think it's helpful. 2 to the power 2x, I'm going to write it as 2 to the power x squared. Notice that the exponents can switch around. And at this very point, we would like to replace 2 to the power x with something. Finally, right? Almost at, or at the end, let's go ahead and replace 2 to the power x with something. How about t? t is fun, right? t is cool. It's a good variable. It's also good as a drink. Anyways, 
Let's go ahead and replace 2 to the x with t. And that gives us 2t, or not 2t. If you have a 2 root, then you are a 2t anyways. 1 plus t squared. You might be looking at this equation like, does it have a golden ratio as a solution? Or does it have any real solutions? Let's put everything on the same side. And you'll be surprised. I don't know if you were expecting this. But from here, we get something interesting. t squared minus 2t plus 1. What does it mean? This is a perfect square, and it's just perfect because we can find the values. Did I say values? The value of t, because there's only one, and that is t equals 1. Wait a minute. We're not looking for t. We're looking for coffee. No, I mean we're looking for x, right? But what is the relationship? 2 to the x is t. So let's set t equal to 2 to the power x. And ta-da, you're going to get x equals 0 as the only real solution from here. But do you think there are any complex solutions to this equation? Something to think about. And I can kind of give you a little bit of direction on what you can do to get complex solutions if there are any. But isn't that interesting? I wasn't actually expecting to get 0. Or I was expecting, and I forgot, I don't know. But it's kind of interesting that we end up with 0. And you can go to the very beginning, obviously, and kind of plug in 0. 2 to the power 0 is 1. Two to the 4 to the power 1 is 4. 2 to the 4th is 16. 4 to the power 0 is 1. 2 to the power 1 is 2. 4 to the power... Okay, you see where that breaks. 2 to the 4th equals 4 to the 2nd. Therefore, and as you know, these are the only integers for which this is true, right? A very, very special scenario. Anyways, if you were looking for the complex solutions, what could you have done? Let's go ahead and start with the original equation, and then hopefully I can give you something to work off of. So with the complex case, you could kind of write our equation like this, remember? Uh, we wrote it like this. We brought it to this level. And then from this point on, you could actually do the following too if you wanted. You could ln both sides, bring the powers down, but you could you need to keep doing it until all the powers are down. And then you can kind of put all the powers together and go off of that. Or you can just work with this. Now remember, uh, we brought it to a point where the powers of uh, the twos were equal. So let's go ahead and pick it up from here. I think this is going to be a little easier to work with. So I kind of have... 2 to the power, 2 to the power 1 plus x equals 2 to the power 1 plus 4 to the power x. At this point, let's go ahead and divide both sides by this. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but that should give me a 1 here. And on the left-hand side, I should be getting 2 to the power, 2 to the power 1 plus x minus 1 minus 4 to the power x equals 1. And at this point, I'm going to do the following. Allow me to erase this area so I can work. Now, here, I would probably go with the following. First of all, I want to change this to e, so kind of write it as e to the power ln 2 to the power 2 to the power 1 plus x minus 1 minus 4 to the x. And then the right-hand side can be complexified as well and written as e to the power 2 pi n i. And then... Go ahead and set this equal to that. I don't know if you're going to be able to solve from here, but this should give you an idea what the solution. I believe this is solvable because you can go ahead and set 2 to the x equal to t again, but you're going to have something in terms of i, and hopefully you can go off of that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.